Shay Russell for mining.com.au and joining me today is Gary Lohman, the VP of Exploration for Nine Mile Metals. Gary, it's fabulous to see you again. How are you? Very good. Good morning, Shay. Yes, thank you very much uh, and good afternoon to you. Uh, Gary, let's kick off. We are going to do one of my favorite things in the whole wide world, and that is nerd out over the geology of one of your projects. In particular, I believe we're talking about the Bathurst area. Uh, for everybody listening, what is the Bathurst area and why is it important to Nine Mile Metals? Bathurst is one of the almost, say, legacy VMS camps in Canada. It was host to the, I guess we we'll call it a super giant, the Bathurst 12, um, operated uh, for approximately 50 years, over close to 350 million tons, massive lead zinc deposit. And this is exceptionally prospective ground. And it's, there's about 95 occurrences around the camp with 45 deposits. And you got 25 of them probably above, you know, at least a million tons. And one thing we found, um, and I'll bring up the geology map in a second here. There's a sort of a periodicity to the way these uh, deposits are scattered around the camp. There seems to be about a eight to 10 kilometer distance between them. And the geology, once you uh, get a handle on the, the better units, the stratigraphy, you just track your, track your program and pick up the right ground. So let's get into, yeah, the geology of your particular projects. This is the Bathurst Mining Camp. It is, uh, the yellow are just massive felsic volcanics. The green are the mafix, and the gray is the, uh, just a mix of sediments. I can turn on and show you the mineral deposits. Please do. So we've got all the bright red dots are, are the various mineral occurrences as documented by the government. And you can see the old mines here. Everything seems to be claim boundaries are north south, except these oddball mining leases up here where you have the Caribou, I believe it's Murray Brook and down to Restigouche. The monster that I talked about is the Bathurst 12, which is up here and below it's for the Brunswick 12 and it's the Brunswick number six. Mm. Where we're gonna go um, is over to this side here is the wedge, uh, the wedge deposit, which is right here. And another big one is adjacent to it is Canoe Landing Lake. That's about 20 million tons. Now we first looked at the camp. You've, it's just ex extensive. You're getting into like a thousand square kilometers of really good ground. So we had, to, um, it's got the volcanics, it's got the sediments. So we have to, um, start doing some targeting and there's, uh, with the government, there's some legacy databases out there, Aerodat and Megatem, flown, I think, in 99 and uh, 2004, respectively. The Megatem was electromagnetic and magnetics. And we had our consultants uh, reprocess that data. And using the electromagnetic signatures, uh, we they prioritized uh, 20 different uh, sort of regional targets. And, and with the electromagnetics, they look at the conductance and it's like early, mid and late time. And basically that just um, reflects, they put a charge into the ground and you just measure the bleed off. If it's early, nice and quick, you've got probably something near a surface in a, you know, lights up uh, nice and easy, like some, just some, maybe a bit of sulfide could even be just a fracture, some graphite. Mid times a little longer, but it's the late times what you're looking for something that holds a charge and that gets reflected in the, in the conductance. And that's what we were looking at. So now we're dealing with, like I say, about 20 different, uh, target areas. So these are your tenements that we're looking at. They're the outlines we can see. Um, all of this out here are just the claim lines. Our main ones right here. This is uh, around California Lake. Uh, a wedge is actually here. This map came out prior to that acquisition, and we've got a nine mile brook is up in this area. So once we got to this, we prioritized by the late time conductance. And you can just barely see some of the lines on here where 
California Lake where we were drilling before. The bright red is the strong. And in this, we get up into the more moderate and light blue are the weaker targets. And ideally, we're looking for some of the shorter, stubbier ones. If you're getting into really long, extensive uh, conductivity, you're probably looking at like strat stratigraphy, maybe some faults or maybe some graphite shearing. So now that we've got to this point, we'll go to a little finer target selection. We'd acquired the, the wedge property, and that's this extensive area here. And there's very distinct target zones within it including this one just off. This is also some nine mile ground that extends up, but you can see that conductive trend. And right down here is the old wedge mine. And the wedge is important in this area. Um, it operated, it was discovered back in 56 and operated, I think, believe between early 60s, 62 to 68. And it produced a million and a half, you know, metric tons of just shy of 3% copper. And, you know, 2% two, 2 plus combined lead zinc with, uh, I think it's 20 grams silver. And that, that is the highlight right in this. So now that we've narrowed it down to this point, um, we've got to look at refining our targeting a bit more. So how will you be refining your targeting then? And we're going to show you right now. Ooh. Very specific EM on top. So that's just getting into more detailed reprocessing. And then you can see the red, uh, the red, um, blue, and yellow poly lines. And those are sort of the axis of the conductors. And that just nicely uh, lines up. So, so we've got to this point, and you've got your conductors. We know those target plates are there, or the uh, sort of those targets are there. And now we're going to look at um, the magnetics. Now, we do magnetics quite a bit. We flew a lot of uh, mag here because now when I'm like, I'm old enough, I've walked the bush and done all this nonsense with handheld unit. And we get into the magnetics, we can move down and we did this with a drone. So we can look at drone magnetics over a large portion of this includes, and we, because of the survey was doing close space, we made sure we covered part of the trend up to California Lake East and up in the north. And there's various, um, and that's the beauty of now computers and drones, instead of like 100 meter spacing walking lines, we're doing it like 30 meters and they're covering 60 kilometers a day. It's just massive amounts of data. And they can, using their various algorithms, they can produce different types of maps. So this is, I think, the first, first derivative of the remnant magnetism. And that, and that helps define some of the stratigraphy and uh, some of the contacts. And in Bathurst, uh, one thing that's um, also, I, I say associated with the deposits is magnetism. Uh, some of the earlier ones had um, iron formation directly associated and uh, others you've just got elevated magnetics. And you can see that if I pull into the wedge here, this is the area of the wedge. And I can highlight that very easily. Oh, it's all the exploration drill holes defining the deposit. Yes, okay. And one thing I'd like to uh, sort of emphasize too is we were lucky. If you go to the government database here and check, you can go and um, see these uh, drill holes plotted on a, the government uh, website. But it was done by a company called Cominco, and it was essentially proprietary. It'll just say Cominco data. But we were lucky and located the database, and we've got the drill logs for 76 different drill holes. And that's all been coded and ready to go for modeling. This is super interesting, Gary. Uh, it's great to get a really good in-depth look at what's happening at the project here. But I believe you've got a 3D map that you can show us. Well, I'm, I'm going to switch in a second here. Um, if you remember where our target areas were, we decided, uh, we talked to our consultants, and we did um, time domain EM on surface. So these are our target areas here. This is our grid that was surveyed. And I'll turn that off for a second. And you can just barely see the uh, sort of the, 
the plates here. Now I'm going to stop sharing this and go to my 3D model. So the results of our time domain EM, that's that grid that I showed you. And as we tip this nicely, you've got your... Ooh, very nice. We've got our conductive plates that are outlined by the survey. And ideally, we can take this into level like this. Our geophysicists will look at it, and each one of these is a conductor at depth, and they will provide us with drill coordinates and almost in the middle of these plates where that's sort of their the sweet spot. They'll put a big X on it, and we'll drill hole, we'll target that. So that is... Uh, it's just beautiful technology to use right now. Um, and just before we wrap up today, how much of this technology has made a difference to exploration? It saves a lot of time. I, like not only narrowing down our targets, like with a massive camp like this, so you can get into some good acquisition, just the time. Like, like, I, when I, like I say, I started walking lines, doing magnetics. Like if you did a mile a day, you were doing good. Here we're flying 60 to 100 kilometers of close space magnetics that can get processed and you're dealing with data in days, if not, you know, maybe weeks, but just to get through all the data crunching. And this again, um, easy to do, just massive amounts of data that you can work with. And the other beautiful thing in Bathurst, it's all pretty much road accessible. We can work 24 or 12 months of the year and uh, drive to all our properties within an hour out of Bathurst. Uh, listen, Gary, this is incredible. Thank you so much for the look at the maps. Uh, I hope to have you back on because I actually really hope to have more, we get to look at more maps and more of the geology of the Wedge project. Uh, thank you for being here today. This has been fantastic. Okay, glad to be here.